You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsted. Ladies and gents, this is Kevin Kirsted, host of Truth on Tap and Caps on Tap. I hope you're enjoying the show. Truth on Tap is focused on bringing you absolute truth about everything from mainstream media to comedy, from psychology to the paranormal. This show keeps it real, not the fake kind of real, the real kind of real. That same spirit also covers our Caps on Tap show about the Washington Capitals. Caps on Tap shows air only after Capitals wins at this time. Please come like our Facebook page and join the conversation at Facebook.com slash Truth on Tap show. Truth on Tap has been picked up and promoted by iHeartRadio, the internet audio mega monster. So shows are available there as well as on Spreaker and a limited selection on iTunes. To get in on a show's chat, you can chat from the Facebook page I mentioned or or go to www.spreaker.com slash user slash truth on tap and look for the live episode or call in at 910 no lying that's 910-665-9464 thanks again for checking out truth on tap and caps on tap you're listening to truth on tap with host Kevin Opening up the truth pipeline for these bitches. Truth. Truth on tap. Truth. Truth. Truth on tap. What have I done, man? Three booting, honestly. Oh, see Verizon. Verizon, I was going to leave you alone. Can't do it now. Can't do it now. 8, 18, 14, 7, 30 p.m. And you may say, well, Kevin, 7, 30 p.m. is not a bad time to start a show. You're right. But I've gotten in the habit of starting my fucking show when I tell people I'll start it. So I have a problem when a service that we're paying trillions and gazillions of dollars into well maybe not that much is supposed to provide us with relatively high-speed internet and I can't connect DSL so I go through the same service Verizon naively thinking that the Wi-Fi over 3G will do it because it's worked before but you see it's rained about a 50th of an inch today And when it rains in southeastern Virginia, down goes Frazier, down goes Frazier, down goes Frazier. And that's what happened. So none of my shit was working. Not your fault, folks. If you tuned in for the first show that failed miserably, I'm very sorry. I also feel a responsibility to warn you that this one could flop too. For raindrops do continue to fall in certain parts of southeastern Virginia, making my entire radio venture tonight subject to massive systematic doom. Yeah, Verizon. Uh, I, I don't like complaining about technology. I'm not one of those guys that hates on Microsoft all the time, uh, even though I do believe that some of their products kind of suck. But fuck Verizon. I need to go ahead and get that in. They suck. They have sucked on every level you can suck for our DSL and cell service. Uh, They just have. I mean, their customer service sucks. They lie to you. Oh, yeah, that's an outage. We'll have that ready by 7.30 tonight. You call them the next day. Oh, that's the regional outage. We were talking about a local outage. Yeah, that'll be done by 7.30. That's not done by 7.30 tonight. A week later, it's not done by 7.30 tonight, Verizon. You lied to me. You lied to a guy who has a radio show called Truth on Tap. Try to predict, if you can, where a problem might then arise with the way I deliver information about people, places, and things, and how you fit into that. Go ahead and use your thinking cap fucking idiots. I don't like calling people idiots, but God damn it. They lie. They sent out a technician out here and they did a speed reading and it was something like 0.4 megabits. So I'm talking to the guy through the technician on his speakerphone, talking to the Verizon help desk 
And I say, yeah, it's running about 400 K bits. Yeah, what's playing next here? Genghis Stereo Black Star. That'll piss me off just right. Yeah, Genghis featuring Stereo Black Star Super Negro coming up. Yeah, here it is. Oh, I just got a jam to this for a sec. Let me chill. Y'all do your thing. You, you get your dance going. I'll get mine. I'll do the hump. You do the T. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I pick on this song, and I'm like, you can't be hard in France, but I do like this song. This song kicks ass. Plus, it helps me learn my French, which I'm back into studying all over again. Yeah. It's kind of weird to hear somebody try to be gangster hard in, in French. Uh, I understand that, but it's also an easy way to practice the language, music and, and TV movies uh, that are in foreign languages. It's a good way to practice the language. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta turn that down just a little because I'm getting a little. Uh, I'm feeling, I'm becoming black. I, uh, I think I'm turning French black, and that's that's not going to work for you. Because we're going to talk about black today. We're going to talk a little bit about the news. What's the point of this show? You know, I've broken my own rule. As you know, when I come into a show, I like to first say, here's the foundation. Here's what we're doing. Well, I didn't do that tonight. So fucking, you know, kick me in the balls and call it a day, okay? The show is called Truth on Tap Rebooting. It was called Truth on Tap Rebooting. But because I couldn't get on the first fucking try. Hey, Grandpa Al. Andrew, what's up? Good to see you in the chat. Kim should be here. Um, good. Thank you, Grandpa Al. And you know something? Uh, Grandpa Al, we have recommended you as a moderator. If And I'm, only, I'm not talking about this debate tonight except to say this. We've recommended you as a moderator if Team Debbie Daly decides to debate Team Goofy again because you're probably the only, only one mature enough to handle it. I couldn't. My balls are too big. Somebody poked me in the chest and I went the fuck off on it. I don't like bullies. I like, I, I'm, I'm a team guy. I believe everybody's equal in a given room. I have people looking to me for leadership and I go, I'm not your leader, man. You can ask him. Back in the paranormal hunting we do in the woods, somehow, over the course of a year, as we would go back and do these ghost hunts, people were asking me to lead the group. You're the leader. You're, and I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm no different than a guy in a field full of people watching the stars. We're observers. That's it. I don't like leading. The only time I will ever use my leadership skills, there's two situations. One is if there's a major disaster, I can organize things because I can think under pressure. Number two is if an alpha male gets in my face, which is what happened during that debate. And when an alpha male gets in my face, as I said last show, I get alfalfa male. The cowlick pops up on the back of the head, the pants become high waters, and I put up on my dukes. Uh, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Don't, don't get alpha male in my face. Not going to work. So that's all I have to say about that. Again, this is three booting. The whole purpose of this show is to reset, to take the path that this show was on and reinstitute it and get off of the little sidetrack I went on with that attempted debate moderation. Yeah, it didn't work for me. It didn't didn't do well. Yep. You're listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin didn't do well didn't do well in that um so what we're going to talk a, a little bit about today is the news uh okay so grandpa al i think is going to do the the debate moderation if they ask him to i don't know if they're going to i don't even know if they're going to do another debate but it was a disaster grandpa al and it was because i was asked to be an authority and then before i even got a chance to establish what the rules were my authority was challenged so i just did a fucking backflip What's up, Pimp Hat? Best buddy. Yeah, it's all right, man. Hey, you know, your argument was valid on uh, Goofy Bone's page. That's fine. You know, he had a bone or two to pick with me. That's fine. You did it professionally. Uh, so we're not talking about that anymore. I'm all done. All done talking about that whole debate debacle. And we're going on to reset this show. This is where I'm going to essentially lay out the renewed vision, which is not a new vision for this show. This show, in, uh, historically, not through any planning, just turned out to be a show that liked to focus on philosophy a lot, psychology a lot, 
critical thinking a lot, understanding how to think. That, that was a big thing to me. It doesn't really measure your intelligence. It's all about the engine you're using to process information. And it's one of the things I've been concerned about for a long time because I've seen people, including myself, making so many mistakes in our thinking that are leading us to bad beliefs. So that's the, that's the road for this show. But I find that truth, and truth is what it's all about, <clears throat> is not only evasive today, but it's told best through comedy. And I enjoy comedy more than anything. So there will be a lot of dips into comedy, you know, to the extent that I'm able to. I'm not a, I'm not a born comedian. That's something I have to work at. Uh, other things I'm, I do well naturally, but, but not being a comedian. I'm, I'm really working on that, trying to be funnier, you know. The whole alfalfa male thing. That's funny when you first hear it. you got to admit, that's pretty funny. The problem with a radio show is that it's like an oral blog of sorts. You're going to repeat things. I have a friend, Ramsey Swice, the uh, Arabic midget, who used to routinely co-host on my show. And he, he has a whole thing. You know what his thing is? I never tell the same joke twice. It's true. I mean, he does all these comedy shows and comedies, act, and he's not allowed. He's... he's He's put this condition upon himself to make himself stand out, which there's nothing wrong with that. And his condition is, I never repeat a joke. So, but the problem with that is how difficult it is. Can you imagine doing comedy acts, say, one a week on average, and you can't tell the same joke twice? What a strange limit to put on yourself just to make yourself stand out a little. It's working for him. I mean, he's getting radio shows and interviews like crazy, but I, I wouldn't have done it. I would have picked something else, like... You know, I don't know, like a horizontal mohawk or something, something else to stand out. News is a big deal now. And I know that my friends are looking and saying, oh, God, Kevin's going to talk about what's going on in Missouri. And it is Missouri. You know that it's not Missouri. Well, I'm not going to talk much about it because I'm getting even more insistent upon having my facts together before I speak about something. What I can do is say there are two possibilities here with this, with, with these riots and this murder. Uh, that is that either the guy was innocent or he was much more guilty than we've been led to believe. So I could give you what ifs on those two scenarios and it's ultimately going to be one of those two or some mix of the two. I can do that, but I don't believe we know yet. I don't believe we know how threatened this police officer felt. So I just don't feel like I can comment on it, you know. I can ask people in chat to, com to c tell me what they think about it. There are a few things I want to talk about regarding that case. One is the rioting. Um, you're never going to be taken seriously if your race, your race as a group is coming together to destroy shit when the justice system has not had time to do its work. Keep that in mind. Got to keep that in mind, folks. Jews aren't allowed to fly. Hey, what's up, Guy Shea? Gaza Strip. Guy Shea, Grandpa, Al, Pimpat, all in the chat. I'm not mad at Mekazawa. I don't even know Mekazawa, Pimpat. I'm, I'm not mad at him. Uh, the, only guy, the only guy I even showed attitude to was Goofy Bone, because he, you know, first of all, he came in and belittled me. Caller, identify yourself. Uh, no, I'm the moderator. And I'm, I'm not a caller, first of all. And then, do your goddamn job, moderator. You know, yeah, that doesn't work for me. I don't tell you how to debate. You don't tell me how to do my job. How about that? All I was there to do was enforce the rules. So, yeah, I felt, uh, felt like I was poked in the chest, and I had to stand up for myself. That's all. Uh, I'm sure Mekazawa and, and those guys have had some bad shit to say about me, but I'm not getting into that. I'm not fighting that battle. Go ahead, tear me apart. I'm a shitty moderator that doesn't know his ass from a Shinola, whatever the fuck that is. Okay. What, you think I'm going to fight and, and, and mount this massive counterattack against such, such claims? No. Not going to happen. Not interested in it. I'm interested in going forward. I'm interested in fart sounds. I'm interested in, I don't know, uh, you know, bitches and hoes. Uh, those types of things, you know, 
Grandpa Al understands. We, we, we have a military connection. Now, he, he don't let me try to compare myself to him with regard to military. See, I'm fair about this kind of I'm fair about everything. Uh, a Navy SEAL does more in 12 minutes than a guy in the Air Force does physically in four years. Okay, so I'm not trying to put myself on the level with Grandpa Al. Uh, but we did do our, our, our academic work and we did do our 12-hour exercises uh, on those long weeks where we had to play war games when we weren't at war. We did have to do the obstacle courses and the training for NBC warfare, nuclear biological chemical, and we had to do you know, dive under a desk if someone come in and said, okay, we're simulating that the lab's just been hit with a bomb, blah, blah, blah. So we had to do all that, plus, of course, my regular job. Uh, and this military connection that we have carries with it a certain attitude about silly shit. Uh, I think most of you guys, even if you haven't been in the military, know what I'm talking about already. You've seen enough movies to understand the brotherhood. Uh, that develops between anybody that's been in the military and anybody else who's been in the military and served honorably. Uh, but I don't. There was something I wanted to say very specific about that, and I don't know what it is. So I lose. You know. Yeah. Oh, and I could have won so much, but I but I lost there, which is okay. And uh, you know, just uh, talking about the military like this makes me think that we probably, because he was also in the military, we probably need to call Elvis. Let me call Elvis real quick and see what uh, he has hey to say baby. about Elvis. Hey, this is the king. Oh, oh, oh. I'm I got just sitting machine. here with your friend watching a little TV. No, I don't have any friends, Elvis. We're kind of busy, so why don't you leave a message, and maybe later on we'll go pick out a Cadillac. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Oh, hello there, children. Hey, Shep. Shep. You know where shit comes from? Uh, from your ass, children. Oh, lordy. Oh, lordy. Let, let me call the pet boys, because I think I just blew a oh, gasket. I wish that we could stop and take your call now. Oh, they're that busy, is what we truly bastards. Like to do. But since yeah. we can't, you'll have to leave a message. Okay. If you then. do, we'll get right back to you, right back to you. Okay. Hey, uh, pep boys, y'all motherfuckers need to spend more time working on engines and less time singing. How, how about that shit? Can we have a little of that? I may need somebody smarter than that to help me out here. Uh, Hannibal Lecter, are you available? Hello? Hello, Hannibal. Have the lamp stopped screaming. Don't bother with the trace. Uh, yeah, that won't be dead. on long enough. I have no plans I'm not to trying to trace it. The world's more interesting with you in it. Yeah, I thought so, so you too. Take care now to extend me the same courtesy. Of course I will. I do I'm wish we could you. chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Uh, okay. Bye. Well, you're a man of few words, uh, Doctor Doctor Lecter. Is that how she said it? Is that how Jodie Foster said it? Dr. Lecter. Dr. Lecter. Dr. Lecter. Sounded like her lower jaw had been removed. Dr. Lecter. Maybe I... I still need somebody smart, but with a better sense of humor. How about, uh... Here he is. That's the motherfucker. Yeah. Like no one's home, baby. Leave a message and oh. I'll be sure to get back to you. Oh, behave, baby. Oh, nobody's home tonight. I can't get in touch with anybody. Uh, uh, maybe Margaret I Thatcher. <laughs> do you dare accost me in this manner? No, I do Am accost I the me. object of this brazen overture? You Can are. I kindly confine your remarks to a brief message. To commence as soon as you shall hear the tone. Good day. Oh, God. <laughs> Hello, no, I didn't mean call here. God, God shit. Speaking. Look, if you leave yes. your name, number, and prayer after the tone, I'll get back to you as soon all as right. I can. Please note that I try okay. to answer all prayers in strict rotation, but sometimes the answer is no. Let me call Don Imus. He's Hello. always home. You have uh, reached uh, the right house, but you're listening to the voice of Howard Stern. What? The stupid twerp that you're calling is an imbecile, and um, uh -oh. he is probably playing with himself right now. That's why he's too busy to come to the phone. Leave a message at the beat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. 
Okay, so Don Iman has hired Howard Stern to leave his outgoing message. I've got an Irish Hello, friend on my call. Hello, are you calling Mother. me? Sure, I'm just after leaving the house, or taking another call, hmm. or I'm in the tub, or answering a call to nature. It's not in my nature to leave you without a word. So here's your chance. Put in your two cents, and we'll return your call as soon as ever we can. Bless you. Hey, O'Leary, uh, you need to quit drinking, especially before noon, and that's all I have to say about that. I got a friend who has cash. Let's this see if he's available. This machine has been connected to a 5,000 volt power supply that has been wired to this small kitten. If you hang up before leaving a message, little Fluffy here will be blown to smithereens. It's your choice. <laughs> Hmm. I hung up. Hi, I'm not there. here. Please leave a message for my dog, who will return your call as soon as he finishes going through the garbage and depositing it all over my nice clean kitchen floor, turns over his water dish, chews the buttons off the couch cushions, chases the neighbor's cat up the biggest tree on the block, finishes licking himself in areas that are impolite and mixed company, and impregnates the bitch next door. Wait for the bark. She said bitch. That's funny. Uh, what does Einstein think about Gandhi? I believe that Gandhi's views were the most enlightened of all the political men in our time. We should strive to do things in his spirit, not to use violence in fighting for our cause, but by non-participation in anything you believe is evil. Okay, well, if Einstein said we shouldn't participate in anything, that we might view as evil. Uh, I probably shouldn't talk about the news right now, but I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay, black people, let me give you a hint here. Uh, everybody who knows me knows I don't have a racist fiber in my being. You want for your race, okay, the ones of you, I'm talking to the ones of you in Missouri that are rioting. You want for your race to be A, taken seriously. B, not seen as thugs and gangsters. And C, to be treated like everybody else. Then A, if you want to be taken seriously, you have to stop every time something happens that may have been unjust, fucking up the neighborhood. If you're going to act like animals, you're going to be treated like animals. Now, what is the percentage of blacks in America that are responsible for this riot activity? You people know it's like point zero 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 one percent It's a very small number. These are people who were looking, most of them, for an opportunity to get away with some looting or take out some aggression. The average black person in America knows that's not how you do it. First, you wait for the legal process to take its due course, and then... If it's something like the Rodney King trial and nobody gets in trouble, you're going to be angry. And I, as a fair person, will then understand your anger. And I, as a fair person, might even choose to join you in fucking up a neighborhood. But not till then. Not till then. If you claim you want justice, don't be surprised when justice comes for you after the tapes of you looting arrive at the DA's office. Okay? Just keep that in mind. You want to be taken seriously, you behave that way. You want to be treated like animals, you behave that way. That's all I have to say about that. If it turns out that this guy in cold blood just used his badge on a bad day to shoot an innocent uh, black teen, I say go the fuck off, black people. Do what you got to do to make yourself heard hardcore. But let this process try to work first. Show some respect for the process, and if you don't like the process, and you don't like the way it's been working, get in there and get involved at the lawmaking level to change it, because breaking into stores is not going to change it. Now, a huge response on a militant front might, might, but it would have to be huge. So make sure that it's for the right reasons so that you get public support, because that's ultimately how you win these battles. You have to get public support. What did they say in Gladiator? Win the crowd and you win your freedom. Well, I believe that uh, crosses out of a, a smaller situation like this into a bigger one, which is win world public opinion, and you will win your case. 
and get people behind you and they're not going to be behind you if you just come out of the gate loot uh, wait for the process to happen make sure the process is fair find out whose fault it is exactly if it doesn't work and then let them be the target of your aggression uh, and I'm not suggesting you do anything physical to them that would be silly because you're just going to end up in jail yourself but who saw a time to kill huh? Samuel L. Jackson tell me what you would have done what would you have done if you were the father of that girl and a time to kill I want to know I wouldn't have shot those guys <laughs> I would have waited for the process and if the process didn't work I would have visited their house and we would have gone for a ride and I would have brought with me an aluminum baseball bat a lighter and some kindling and probably some freaky shit like a nail gun and I don't know tennis balls dipped in muriatic acid and um, large clamps and a very powerful battery things of that nature uh, I would have taken care of business that way uh, some people are just determined to see justice and and they're going to uh, but it isn't always uh, so easy as a gunshot uh, so what would you have done people what would you have done if that was your daughter that was raped by the two dudes in a time to kill the movie people in chat room Kim guy Shay grandpa Al what would you have done uh, I don't know if Pimp Pat or Andrew are still in there I assume they are you're listening to Truth on Tap, the host Kevin Kirstead. This is the Three Boot Show. It's the Three Boot Show. We're rebooting, but I had to do it twice, putting us on the third pass of success. A rubber chicken. Yeah, always bring a rubber chicken. I, I know what you would have done with that rubber chicken. What, what are they going to say if they find out that the officer was charged? It's a good question. You know, you know who it's sad for? Because think about, think about the kiss those that raped her without question. Uh, Andrew, the movie basically went like this. There's a black guy down in Mississippi. His daughter, uh, there's a couple of drunk rednecks. His daughter's like 11, year old, 11 years old. She gets uh, raped and beaten. And I don't remember, I don't think she was killed. But, but she could never have children. I mean, they, they destroyed her. Uh, so Samuel L. Jackson, the father, shows up at the at the court case uh, for them and ends up shooting them. So then he goes on trial. And, and this question is, what would you have done, essentially? How guilty is he, you know? Oh, you meant kill. Okay. Because I can't... I, oh, you scared me there. I thought this was going to be one of those tricky situations I had to navigate with Grandpa Al about forgiveness. You know, that, that's more animalistic. That's what I expected, Grandpa. That's what I would do. I become the animal once you hurt my loved ones. I'm, there's no civilized behavior about me. But yeah, in situations like this, you know, you have to let the legal system at least try to work. If you inherently don't believe that the legal system in America is worth a shit, why do you live here? Why not go to a country where you respect the legal system? Uh, if you don't like certain parts of this legal system, you can get involved in getting laws changed. You, you should know that if you ever had a civics class. And uh, I, I wish more people did. This acting like animals is going to get you treated like animals. And what do we do with animals? We put them in cages. That's all. I can understand the anger, you know, because everyone's looking at this in a vacuum. But I say step back for a minute. You've got all kinds of things to consider from Trayvon Martin and that time frame to now. Uh, guys getting shot 40 and 50 times that are unarmed reaching for their wallet and they're black. And you begin to say, when is enough enough? And there, things like this can, can start a civil war, folks. I am not trying to exaggerate at all. You know I'm right. Things like this can start a civil war if you piss off enough people enough. And, you know, the, the black population in America is somewhere around 14%, uh, but that equals many millions. And when many millions arm up and organize, you've got a problem, depending, depending on what your target is. <clears throat> you've got a problem either way, you know. And if they start going for innocence to say, see how you hurt us, now we're going to hurt you the same way, you've got a real problem. So just keep that in mind. 
justice better find a way to work for your own security justice needs to work in this country <clears throat> and that includes police that do shit like that while holding up their badge that says on the front of it and they don't seem to read that but serve and protect uh, they need to pay just like anybody else would pay they don't need special attention they need to pay you guys know that I believe there's a huge problem with law enforcement abuse of authority I believe there are some excellent cops out there I think some of the cops out there are so good they're actually carrying their load and keeping an eye on the other cops because they don't want their reputation diminished by a bad cop but ask yourself this with the uglier parts of human nature the way they are and the authority that a badge and gun gives you with the relatively low amount of prerequisite training how likely is it for an officer of the law once he's in that position of authority to always behave honorably how likely is it uh, I think we have to have screening processes set up before anybody gets into any position where they are allowed to legally kill someone as such as law enforcement and that process needs to be thick and thorough and not just a one-time thing that gets you into the force it needs to be a monitoring thing uh, you know if if a if an MD is doing surgeries to remove bad kidneys or kidney transplants and three times in one year he accidentally removes somebody's bladder he loses his license he doesn't go before a panel of doctors that say hey hey let's keep this quiet okay let's keep this quiet you're gonna you're gonna make all doctors look bad okay we'll leave you a license but we're gonna have to move you to another district no no he he's banned from practicing medicine so why this protective nature inside of law enforcement to protect their own regardless of the crime uh, is in place I don't understand but it's got to be addressed it's got to be fixed or you're gonna end up with a civil war all because our, our law our uh, law enforcement system would not work the way it was designed to work and I think that happens at the admission process now that happens with filtering your applicants and then refiltering and then three filtering and then monitoring how are they handling power uh, the idea of having video cameras on them at all times I like that a lot of police forces are doing that now since the police forces have done that complaints against police for police brutality have gone way down but we need everybody doing it there is no reason a law enforcement officer should feel like his privacy is being violated if he has to wear a camera and mic every time he busts somebody my two cents on that grandpa Al says bad enough we are in the verge of having a civil war that could happen between the justice system and those that deem Obama a traitor to this country the justice system uh, yeah I mean if yeah well you're right there, there was already boiling animosity that didn't necessarily have to do with the law I mean uh, racism since 2008 has been has been on the front the front line Andrew says chainsaw and a blowtorch. That's a, that's, a, that's a good way to do it. A doll guillotine. Yeah. Man, you guys are interesting. I swear, some of the views you have on justice and, and uh, education and, and, and the legal system in this country, it just baffles me because it's, it's not something I read much. I'm always reading the filtered stuff through the media, and then I get some real shit in my chat room, and I'm going, okay, this, this is what I'm interested in. This is what the people are thinking. <sighs> you know, I'm supposed to do some comedy, I'm supposed to keep this lighthearted, supposed to redefine the path of truth on tap to get it away from whatever that uh, clusterfuck was that was a debate that I tried to moderate which I will not spend any more time talking about it was done in the last show if you have any questions about how I felt about that debate um, the last show will answer them although I was in a heightened sense of defensiveness and a uh, a state of uh, presenting my case to you know 
ward off some of the attacks that were coming at me. I'm all done with that. I'm all done with that. So the attacks are probably continuing now. There'll probably be new episodes, new shows from people that are going to say, I can't believe that fucking moderate. That's fine too. I'm not talking about it. I'm all done with that. It's not interesting to me. Uh, what's interesting to me is, is how people take in information and how they use it. And then what truths they come to. Have you, have you looked across the political landscape of America over the past year? Have you looked at the massive variation between beliefs on what's true and what isn't true? I mean, let me ask you a favor, people. Find yourself a fact-checking site that you respect, that uses sources that you respect. And keep an eye on your news so that you know when you're getting bullshit. Because news organizations, for the most part, some are worse than others, but for the most part, they're not afraid to be inaccurate. Especially if they can bypass the punishment for being inaccurate by inserting in place of it some drama. Because people like drama, and they will make exceptions. They will make exceptions to your accuracy uh, content if you'll give them a little treat of drama. And it's like Alan Wayne said the other night, uh, what sells? What, what, what's in the tabloids? Tabloids sell. People like drama, and I think it comes back to something else we talked about, which is people like to see other people hurt. They may just like to watch it for, oh no, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Or there may be some, you know, what did the Germans say? Die Runes, die Freudis, die Schadenfreude. Which is that the purest and most malicious joy we gain is in the misfortunes of those we have envied. Uh, th this is why we like to see our stars fall. This is why we love to watch a Charlie Sheen story. Wow, he was on top. Look at him fall. He's at the bottom now. Yeah. Boring waste of time, uh, Andrew, what, my show? It, it could be. It could be a boring waste of time, but... Uh, I, I don't know. I guess it's all relative. Uh, the news is a boring waste of time to me half the time. When I look at it, it's they, they, they look for the drama. You know, like the Ebola cases. You realize that the number of people this year that will die from Ebola compared to the number that will die from this year's couple of strains of flu is ridiculously low. But it is because of the, the, the scariness of the speed and intensity at which Ebola works that it is sold much like a shark attack or two across the planet of seven or eight billion people uh, will take news over someone eating poisoned mackerel. Uh, it, it's got the fear factor. It's got the drama element. And that's why it'll sell. Numbers become unimportant. It's a sad thing. I hear people all freaking the fuck out because 12 people died in a bus and 25,000 people die a day from hunger or hunger-related illness. 18,000 of those are children. But we're freaking out about 12 people on a bus because they were on a bus? I don't understand why we don't care about the numbers and how widespread death is and how when it happens in a certain way, we're suddenly concerned. You know, little Angela goes missing. We've got a whole country looking for her. But 15 little Angelas go missing Uh on, under different circumstances, and we don't have never even heard her name. Sad thing. Well, that feels negative to me. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to focus on comedy for the second half of this show. I want you guys to come up in the chat room, if you would, with some ideas, some topics, some things you'd like to hear f funny things about or made fun of or types of comedy that you like. I'm going to line up a couple of songs, and I'm going to refill my mug of coffee. And we're going to get into the second half of the show. It's not going to be a super long one tonight. But I needed something. I needed something to kick off the restart. Or the three start. And that's what this is. So let's see. For music right now. I'm going to play some stuff I haven't played in a while. I like this one. Snowflake, A Foolish Game. Yeah, it's almost like a poetry reading. Talking about how foolish basically life is. And it is. It is to a degree. Uh, it, it's not a logical thing. If you, were, if you were an external force looking on to planet Earth and its people, you probably laugh a lot. The fuck is wrong with those creatures? I would. I'd laugh a lot. I do. 
And then after that, we'll go to Low Tag Blanco, Slumlord, one of my favorite funky jazz songs. And by then I'll probably be back, but in the event that I'm not, you'll get soda with 18 pieces. So hang in there, come up with some ideas about something funny and shit. And then, when we come back, we'll do something funny and shit. How about that? That is that, so here goes this. Life's a foolish game Do you ever feel the same? Well, maybe we could change Turn the ship another way Feel it in the darkness Sailing right into those jagged cliffs Yeah Some say we've always been insane Hey, life's a foolish game Simple equation Running close system Natural world gone missing Plus all our CO2 emissions Equals degradation Waste and shifts and mass extinctions Oh no But maybe we can change We sure can't stay the same Cause life's a foolish, foolish game
listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsten. Life itself is magical without lies about Santa Claus. Gift giving can be so fun without becoming buying drones. Stories about virgin birth. Stories taken word for word from books that have been translated too many times to count are just stories to me. So please don't wish me a Merry Christmas. Please just skip to a Happy New Year. Love and cheer. Yes, I am an atheist, and you can call me a Scrooge, cause I'm a fan of reason. Don't partake in religious celebrations, but I do like to have fun, and I am up for friendly hugs. Just please respect this one request from me. Please don't wish me a Merry Christmas. Love and cheer. I'll drink down some vegan nog without the egg but extra rum. I'll have a green and red cookie because I love eating sweets. A sled ride sounds exciting and let's build a snow person. Together we can have some secular fun. If you please don't wish me a Merry Christmas. Oh, oh, please just skip to a Happy New Year. To those who don't believe, to those who are unsure, please know you're not alone. No, you aren't. Just because we don't congregate or have our own holiday doesn't mean we can't have fun while being true to ourselves. Please don't wish us a Merry Christmas. Please just get to a Happy New Year. The Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsten. Yeah, and uh, you can wish me a Merry Christmas. I'm good with that. You're listening to Truth on Tap. The host Kevin Kirsten. Wes Johnson said it. Find him at westjohnson.com. I was looking at some radio DJ names. Uh, Most of you guys in the chat room right now have your own radio shows. I'd like to know how you got your name. Uh, If you would type it in there. I'm looking at this. You know, this isn't a long list, and and if you didn't know, you can go out on the internet now, and they have a radio name generator. Uh, they have several different services and sites that'll that'll do that for you. And one of my friends used one, and his what he got back and has stuck with since and has worked very well for him is Crash Jesus. Yeah, HTLA One Radio out of New York. You know Crash? Yeah. You may have heard of Pimp with a Limp. Uh, I'm curious how Pimp Hack got his name. Wolfman Jack, we know all about that one. Uh, you've heard of Bubba the Love Sponge. The Grease Man. His real name is Doug Tract, and he became well-known at gigs like Weep AM, Jacksonville, and WWDC-FM, Washington, D.C. Grease Man. What, what an easy name to remember. I like this one. Anyone who lives in Chicago will probably know this. I had not heard of it before today. John Records Landecker. John quote, records, unquote, Landecker. Uh, That's an impossible name to forget. Uh, Then you have Mancow. They're mentioning Mancow. Matthew Eric Muller. Boom Boom Brannigan. Boom Boom, that's a good one. That's easy, easy to remember. And then Steve Boom Boom Cannon. But Boom Boom works. Um, Boom Boom, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Uh, You know, or like if you're a black kid and you raise your your hands, boom, boom, is usually the next thing you hear. So it's it's a natural nickname. 
Well, I had to do it. It was begging to be said, Jesus Christ. Uh, that's that's the political front right now in America. That's what's happening. So, what else is funny on the radio? Let's see what you guys have had to say about how you got your radio names. Gramp, the grandpa name. This is Grandpa Al Kruska, who says you're supposed to sound like a toilet when you say it. Kruska. I just scared the shit out of one of my cats. Uh, my grandpa name was by my grandkids, and so I always told stories of them when they were over. They said, go online, so since they're not near me, they can hear the stories I read on air. Okay, all right, that works. Kim doesn't have a radio name, that's all right. Uh, Dyslex, I, I haven't heard how he got his name, and, and um, I, I can't imagine, I mean, unless you are dyslexic. Uh, I would like to hear how Pimpack got his name. Andrew, backwork issues. Zodiac 12, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that means. I try, to, I try to understand these fragments I get in the chat, and I don't always understand them. I have a hard time keeping up with any type of broken conversation. I don't have a radio name. You know, I was asking my friend Apocalypse, and I don't know how he got his name either. Oh, Jesus, this cat. Th this is our cat, Thomas. He's the photogenic one. He, he wanted to come out on the porch, and he always stays for five minutes before he starts pawing to go back in. So now i got to get up and let him in. I didn't want to let him out because of this, because I knew he'd want back in. Well, I've done the survey, Kevin, and um, I don't see any bugs or mice. And uh, since you have not installed a roller coaster that is specifically for cats out here, and nor is there a shopping mall where I could pick up some catnip, I'm not interested in your back porch anymore. Go in. Go in. Bastard. He's so needy. He's kind of the mother hen, too, which is weird. Like, he'll, he'll be the one where if a cat pukes or something, he'll try to cover it with imaginary dirt. You guys know about that, right? Where the, where the cats just paw at some air. What, what is that all about? <sighs> yeah, he's making sure I'm up to no good. He's the one that's up to no good. He's the one that comes into the, uh, it, that comes into the bed when I go to bed. And if my girlfriend's already in bed, he'll, he'll come walk on her head. Like he's saying, she's mine, you can't have her. Dyslex, here's how Dyslex got, got the name. When I first started getting onto the internet, you were no one. I, I'm still no one. Uh, if you did, oh, I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you didn't have a handle or nickname. I have dyslexia, so Dyslex just popped into my head. You know you're also not cool if you spell things properly. So, I randomly thought of Dyslex. Okay. Uh, added all caps because I wanted to make sure everyone saw me. All right. Zodiac is from Andrew's music days. What you don't you don't do music stuff anymore, Andrew? That that's in your in your past. <laughs> Andrew said, "Well, at least Kevin is getting some pussy." Yeah, I've got four pussies running around here. I was called Alley Cat a few times, says Grandpa Al, from my junior school days. I used to duck out of the house at 3 a.m. and not come back till just before school starts. Always came home with hickeys, but not from the same gal. Damn. Grandpa Al was a whore, y'all. That's, that's funny. Oh, God, my computer's possessed. I'm not even getting into that with you. I don't like talking about computers. I have to work on them, so I don't like talking about them. Two names on Yahoo. One was Kimmy Cake seventy one. This is Kim Ashbury Moxley talking about her nicknames, and the other was Srumptiously Wicked One. Okay. Kevin Kirstead sounds DJ-ish. It works well. I, I don't know, man. I I went to the to the debate the other night, and I looked at everybody's name, and I'm like, ain't none of these motherfuckers named this. I'm the only bitch in here with this real name. Uh, this is it's not only dangerous because then everybody can just whatever the doxing and all but it doesn't sound cool but maybe there's an air of authenticity about it i don't know i i asked apocalypse if i should get a dj name and he said since you're an author you shouldn't and but i don't you guys have probably never heard me try to sell my books on this show it's not it's not i'm not interested in it if the books don't sell on their merit then they shouldn't sell and i just i'm not trying to use extra tricks to get advertising for them so that's not a good reason just 
just that to, to keep my regular name but I don't know I just to change it now I don't know I don't know if that'd be a good thing and it would it would be like a tattoo to me it would require thought and it would have to be something I wouldn't be ashamed of in 20 years so I, I don't know what I'd go with sounds DJs yeah um, what do you guys find funny? I want to know what kind of comedy you like. How many of you guys like slapstick comedy? You people falling, hidden cameras, and practical jokes. Do you really like the cerebral stuff, the, the Frasier, uh, or, or the Seinfeld type of focus on nothing stuff? What is it that really gets you laughing to the point where you're, you're cough laughing? I'm curious. To me, it's um, it's really just people falling down. That's the best way to get me laughing. I, I don't know what it is about a human being falling down. I I can't stand it. I just I, I just lose my composure. Dyslex says, "I'm telling you, your name's awesome. It sounds almost like a name someone would make up to use as a Hollywood actor." Okay, it might. I mean, at least the K and the K work well together. But I have to put the A in so people know I'm not KKK. And I've been asked that before. What's your middle initial? Like by, by suspicious black people, and uh, although it would have been funny as hell to say Keith, uh, I didn't. I, I told him the truth. Grandpa Al likes comedy in which he gets flashed by women without knowing why. George Carlin, all right, George Carlin. He he does. He had he he had a very special style in which he could take complex issues or simple issues and maul the shit out of them. Toward the end of his life. He was bitter, wouldn't you say? He was he was angry uh, about everything. Now, I don't know if that was part of his act or not, but I think he was just becoming really what's the word? You guys know the word I'm thinking of. Uh pessimistic, but but that's not really what I was thinking of. Just sort of, I don't know, jaded. Stand-up comedy. I like comedy that works the crowd if the person's good at it. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I like stand-up comedy, too. I listen to it all the time on, uh, well, there's various sites, but I listen to streaming comedy all the time whenever I'm playing video games. I'm al I've almost always got streaming comedy on. And sometimes it's funny and sometimes it's not. I mean, like, I can take a half hour of Ron White and love it, but listen to two hours of him and you're, you know, you're tired of it. Uh, who, who's a really good comedian I could listen to for a long time? Oh, my God, that's a hard question. Mm. I, I couldn't tell you one. I like to, I like to really switch them around. I think Louis C, Louis C K ha, has a very interesting style, but he's he's borderline of going into bad taste, like Tosh Point oh. Very borderline there, where he's you know yeah he's talking about dead kids and shit. It's just like okay, I think we might have just crossed over the line. Red Fox, Flip Wilson. Mitch Hedberg is amazing, was amazing. Yeah, I didn't even know he died until somebody said it on Facebook recently. He was. He was incredibly funny. I enjoyed him. Uh, I, I like the slapstick comedy of, like, uh, uh, what was his name, Chris Farley? I mean, just really over the top, yelling and screaming, but yet I didn't like Sam Kinison. <coughs> and I think it's because... He, he just had the yell, and he would say regular shit with his yell, and I'm like, eh, that's just a little noise. It's like loud, heavy metal music to me. It doesn't work unless I'm in the mood for it. Bill Cosby's good. He, he's almost, the thing about Bill Cosby is you can listen to him around anybody. You know, he's doing stand-up again, by the way. I saw a, a show recently where he did like an hour, hour and a half on stage. Robin Williams, uh, what an interesting time to be talking about comedians. He, to me was good for just being wacko and moving really fast mentally but I didn't always find his content funny you know I'm trying to think of some other comedians I really like I don't think Dane Cook is that good like I think all the girls like him because he you know they think he's hot or whatever and that's how he gets a lot of his attention but I don't, I don't think he's that good I think he I think he needs to work on his comedy how about um, females? How about, um, who's that one hot chick that's a comedian? 
the one who said, I'm fucking Matt Damon. Um, Sarah Silverman. I think she she's borderline sometimes, but I think she's pretty hilarious. Don't, don't read this on air, okay? Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, there, there's one lady who's about five foot tall and sounds like she's about seven years old. She's pretty funny because she'll stay, she'll say stuff like, there's a concert in my pussy. Stuff like that, which just does not sound right coming out of her mouth. That's always good. I'm looking for a new, I'm looking for a new comedian. I want to listen to some new comedy, something different. Uh... I'll tell you some of the worst comedy I've heard is uh, format comedy, like like Christian comedy, uh, or a anything that's too narrow in focus to address just one group of people doesn't work. I, I like the universal application of humor in my comedy. <sighs> you know what else can be funny as hell is just a stressed person. Have you ever noticed that? You ever see a mom with 12 kids? Jesus Christ. You, you can't help but laugh. If you're close to her, you won't laugh at her because she'll kill you. But you can just see her thinking, oh, God, if you're up there, you know, <clears throat> I've got 12 kids. And if a woman's got like two kids, like she's on that shit. She, you know, Billy, leave Bobby alone. Bobby, go to your room. Billy, change your socks. A woman's got 12 kids. She, she gives up. You see this look in her face that registers defeat. And I can just hear her saying, God, just let me keep about five of them. You can take away seven. Take away, just leave the, the prettiest and the smartest ones here with me. And make it quick. I don't want them to suffer. Uh, but uh, these fucking kids are going to kill each other anyway. So take them. Uh, take them away uh, before I have to do it. And then, of course, I'm thinking, why the fuck did you have 12 kids? You know? Fucking walking around mumbling to herself and shit. Smacking at things that aren't there. You're gone. You're gone, lady. You know. Yeah. What People that are really stressed can be funny. And it's sad because we do. We, we probably shouldn't have uh, that type of uh, enjoyment of someone's pain. But uh, oh, oh, here's a good comedian. Speaking of that. Uh, what the hell's his name? I know you guys are going to know him. Richard something. I'm pretty sure it's Richard something who's always like neurotic. You know, he's like a New Yorker and his family is just terrible. And he's always talking about different members of the family. I love that guy. I haven't heard from him in forever. I don't even know if he's still doing comedy. I know somebody here knows what I'm talking about. Richard somebody. I miss him. And for some reason, Jewish people, uh, Jewish people talking about their families, there, there's a, there, there's an inherent comedy in that. Who saw my big fat Greek wedding? Greeks are funny as hell, if that was an accurate depiction of how they act in their families. They're funny as shit. I think, I think Seinfeld was Jewish. Who else? There's another Jewish. Oh, uh... Who's the guy that's really super cynical? I think his last name's... Shit. I can't remember. He, he comes out of D.C. He was talking about the uh, wardrobe malfunction of Janet Jackson. And he, he said, there's no nipple. That's not a titty. Uh, uh, all that is, if there's no nipple, is an elbow. I'm sorry. Bill Crystal's good. But that's not who I was thinking of. Uh, I, th I think his name might might be... Lu oh, Richard Lewis was the, ri uh, the the one guy I was thinking of. Lewis Black, that's it, Kim. That's the one I was trying to think of. He's pretty funny. But he gets too angry, man. When you get that angry, uh, I'm not enjoying it that much anymore. It, it, it becomes kind of depressing. It's like, this is what I was talking about when we were talking about George Carlin toward the end. He actually started a new thing. I don't know if you guys saw it, but in a couple of his acts, he ended up stopping it because it wasn't working. But he would say, after he would say a joke, he would say um, something like, Well, God damn it, I'm mad. You know? And then he would say a joke and say, Well, God damn it, I'm mad. And it wasn't working. I, I didn't like it. It was too, you know, it just got negative. It got too negative. 
got to be able to laugh at yourself and people without turning purple every time you talk about people. J Medicine Hat. I, I might have to check him out, Kim. Anybody know any good up-and-coming comedians that are different? Uh, I'll tell you something very strange I heard. There's both a female and a male comedian separate from each other that are doing this now. They're talking in the 1920s dialect. Have you heard these people? You know? Uh, the guy's like, well, I should have told you. I was coming here to tell jokes tonight, you see. And, you know, he's like 25 or 30 years old, so it's it's very unusual to hear. But uh, I think that's neat. A little bit of throwback in the in the dialect. Yeah, Lewis Black does a stressed out bit already. He looks like he's about to pop most of the time. And I think he is. I saw a comedian live one time. He was a local. Kim knows about this place over in a place called Newport News. And it's called Kazi's Comedy Club. I don't even know if it's still there. But he would say like every two minutes, Yeah, I'm on a lot of medications. And he had that Lewis Black approach. Like, I hate all of you motherfuckers. Russell Peters. I'm Googling this shit as you guys say it so I can look these people up and listen to them. And who is the one Kim said? He gets explosive. Lewis Black. Larry David. And Jay Medicine Hat. Larry David. Whenever you have two first names, you're fucked. I mean, that's an automatic curse. And medicine hat. I'm gonna check these guys out. Yeah, I need some bits. I, I need I need a new inspiration for my own humor because my humor is way too dry and way too contrived. It doesn't feel natural. Larry David is he the one that played Doctor Katz? Da 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 da. Jerry Seinfeld. He he looks like the real Doctor Katz. I loved Dr. Katz. Did you guys like that? That was my favorite show when it was on. God, I love that show. Russell Peters. I don't recognize his face. Medicine Hat. All right. Rick, what's up, man? You're, you're coming in toward the tail end of the show. I'm, I'm getting ready to shut this bitch down. Larry David. Who was the one Kim said? J Medicine Hat. Never heard of that motherfucker. J Medicine Hat. Well, Apocalypse is not with us right now, and that means that I don't have my trusty go-to transitional show guy who could give us another show for you guys to go to to keep the chat going since you're in the mood for chat. So maybe Grandpa Al's got some connections. Maybe Dyslex knows who's got a show on right now everybody can jump over to. I hate to leave people and close my bar down when they're just getting into having a couple drinks. But I have my limits, you know, and there's this automatic switch in my head that says, your show's done, Kevin, and it just goes off. So I've got about 10 minutes on either side of that to stop the show. Uh, it's a weird thing, I know. It's, it's just me. I haven't tried to figure it out. The funny side of radio. That's the funny DJ, DJ names. Uh... I always like to talk about about radio stuff because I feel like that applies to half the people that listen to this show because they are DJs of some sort, whether they do talk or, or just spin discs. Occupy my office, getting by on a radio person's salary. That looks like a good story. This is on about.com, radio humor, if you want to check it out. There's a hilarious article there. It's called Not an Interview not an interview with the controversial radio host Alex Jones and it's hilarious this is how it starts out I recently did not sit down to interview controversial radio talk show host Alex Jones I did not pose any actual questions to him nor did he answer any in the midst of this discussion which did not take place I did not cover various topics and it goes on from there so you can imagine it's good satire yeah that's good stuff The Dog Days of Summer and the Dog Ways of Radio. Uh. Radio's not going anywhere, folks. I mean, they'll call it different stuff. Uh, simulcasting, podcasting, fucking fuck casting. Uh, it's not going anywhere because it's one of the few things you can have going in the background while you do other meaningful shit like drive or hike. 
Uh, you can't watch your TV shows then, you can't read books then, but you can have some radio going. So don't be afraid to uh, invest some time into this medium because it's not going anywhere. That I can assure you of. Aaron, what's up? God, I'm getting ready to go and everybody's showing up in the chat room. Anybody got a show you guys can go to from here? Nobody? All right. Well, you guys, <coughs> I, I don't have any. If Apocalypse was here, he could find one. He's, he, he's considered the ambassador of Spreaker. And he can always find a show for everybody to go to. So what I am going to do is post a link in the chat room that shows, in case you guys don't know, the live shows that are on right now. And that way you can pick from one. That way I didn't leave you cold. My show is still featured on the Explore page, by the way, of Spreaker.com for the star on stage. It's the one, two, third one in, the one with the water faucet. That's me. Live now. Here we go. More. Now, keep in mind that the top shows you'll see when you go to live now are just 24-7 shows, and half the time they're just spinning discs. So you have to actually look down the list to find something that's going on with a live chat. So don't say I didn't tell you. Oh, okay. Good, Aaron. Well, I'm glad you listened. Thank you. Uh, I, I normally do longer shows, and I normally do more entertaining shows. This was a, you know, this show was about getting away from a sad little sidestep I took into moderating a debate and getting into Spreaker drama, and I'm stepping right back out of that, right back into my old format of, of just doing a show and trying to focus on comedy and critical thinking and psychology and the broken manimal and some dry humor. Uh, that's that's what I'm going back to. So this show was a reset, if you will, for that. Here's that link I promised you guys now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It, it, it's normally a better show. I mean, if you listen to any, just pick any episode from the past 20, and you'll see it can be pretty jam-packed with action. It's just, that wasn't really my goal today. My goal today was to uh, steer the car back into the correct lane. And I think I did that. So Dyslex, uh, Andrew, Kimberly, who, who, is, who is my closest friend, I know her, you guys, I know a lot of guys don't know the first time, oh, is she just from Chicago? No, she's, we go ghost hunting together. Uh, Rick came in, Grandpa Al was here, but I think he, he may be uh, in the bathroom, you know, wanking the wank. I mean, sometimes you got to do that. Aaron Thomas is there. Uh, and, and... <laughs> my nigga yeah we're we're in that we're in that we're in that stage of of political boldness i think in america where people are sick of pc but they're still sensitive of who gets offended by what and you know let's face it nigga n-i-g-g-a was turned into a comedic term it, it is not meant to be an insult it's often started out as black people who didn't like a black person calling them a nigga but and then it just went to everybody. I mean, Dave Chappelle did it. You can blame Dave Chappelle for handing nigga to the whites to use freely. Uh, he, he's the one that did it. Yeah, I'll, I'll blame him for that. So you guys can put that on him. Brian Gittens, if you've never heard of him, a UK comedian on Spreaker. I have not heard of him. Brian Gittens. I'm Googling all these guys, so after the show's over, I'm going to go actually look them all, you know, check out their shows. Brian Gittens. That's an easy to remember name. Uh, since he did do so many shows with me, I do feel obliged right now or obligated to mention Ramsey Swice. Make sure you guys check him out. He's the the very rare um, Arabic midget comedian. And he it's funny because he's an American uh, who's a Christian. He's not Muslim. Uh, but his, his family came from Jordan. And so we used to really get into some politics. Uh, but he's also a comedian. He's just, he's a Christian comedian. And his whole format is, I never tell the same joke twice. I never repeat a joke. So anyway, um, if that's your kind of thing, if you like that kind of uh, niche, you should check out Ramsey Swice. It's R-A-M-Z-Y-S-W-E-I-S. -S. And uh, I, I don't know what's been going on with some of my regulars that are normally in chat. It's probably my schedule because it's so unpredictable. But uh, R.D. hasn't been coming lately. He's one of my favorites. 
so uh, I, I love my international friends especially my british and australian friends I, I miss those guys they something about the people that come from there they just seem like they're born with 20 more iq points than we are in america uh, i love it because they they just they, they are so versatile in their social dialogue and we don't have that we have to learn that over a long period of time and uh, it, it's just like there's not that fakeness about them that we have. And I think our fakeness stems from Hollywood. I think Hollywood creates our birth ground. And from it, we all emerge. And we're acting out of the gate. And I, I, I don't like that. I, I like reality. So m maybe that's just my interpretation of it. That's brand new. I'm just kind of coming with that off the cuff. But, yeah, and I'm going to share this link on the Facebook announcement for the show you're listening to right now. This is the radio.about.com OD Radio Humor. And that'll be facebook.com slash truth on tap show. For those that didn't know the Facebook page. So I will share the link to that for on the live announcement for this show, which is Truth on Tap's three booting. And for those of you guys that are into radio, you'll probably be interested in that. It's nothing you can't Google. I mean, every, everything I talk about, almost everything I talk about on this show is something you can Google and follow along with. Because uh, that's, that's how I pull my shit up. You know, half the time it's a guide, another half the time I'm actually looking into it. So I'm basically reading from the internet to my audience. And we're deciding what's bullshit and what's not on the fly. Well, I appreciate everybody who came and bothered with this chat. I wish I could have given you a longer show. Yeah, I have made it to 2,000 followers. That's uh, that's amazing. I owe some of that to um, I owe some of that to that debate, which exposed me a little bit. Uh, but I behaved in that debate like a madman, and I think it was because I was challenged. And I don't do well like that. I, I'm a bear in a cave, and that night I was a Terminator. Uh, I went out hunting. So I'm going back to my cave, and you guys are all welcome to my cave. And, you know, as long as you don't surprise me, don't be fucking coming up in my cave uh, and when I'm sleeping and tap me on the shoulder. Because I will, you know, I got to swipe then. I'll swipe into the darkness with my three-inch claws, and that's going to just go through you like butter. Uh, but if you if you say, hey, hey, Kev, yo, I'm outside, can I come out? I'll be like, yeah, bring your ass in here. You know, I, um, I, I ate a lot, so I do have a lot of extra blubber. So, um, you know, we can talk. I've got energy. And we'll do that. I don't know. Uh, oh, $2,000? No. No. Well, thank you, Kim. I thought I showed restraint, too, but I was, I was boiling. As soon as, as soon as I had somebody come into that debate and want to poke me in the chest, it just pisses me off. I'm the most passive guy you'll meet until somebody gets in my face. And then I'm just fucking vicious. I'm like a, I'm like a little crackhead Tasmanian devil all the ugly comes out in me I'm all ugly in the face I make faces like I'm having sex and nobody wants to see that not 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 when you're not having sex I mean yeah Japanese Japanese porn no I, I'm not in Japanese porn but I do believe that you should learn some Japanese why, why don't we learn a little bit now Thank you for calling Learn Japanese in 20 seconds a day. Are you ready? Let's begin. To sign up for tomorrow's lesson, please leave your name and number after the beep. Sayonara. <laughs> sayonara, bitch. And on that note, sayonara to you motherfuckers. I'll leave you with a song from my very good friends, Bad Ace. Uh, they are a local group. You can find them at badace.com. You can also find them on Facebook. <clears throat> and what would be an appropriate song title for the show we did today? Uh, how about... Uh, no, that doesn't really apply. Without How about your love? Yeah, because you guys kind of love me in, in your own ways. Uh, and I love you back in my own way. I, I don't just love people. I, I got to get to know you. But, you know, uh, I, I love the, the company. Th this, this whole show for me, most, most of all, is about socializing. That's really, really the main reason I do it. It's not the only reason, but it's the main reason. So on that note, you'll get Bad Ace, your love. And since that is that, here goes this. Oh, what's 
Listening to Truth on Tap with host Kevin Kirsted. Ladies and gents, this is Kevin Kirsted, host of Truth on Tap and Caps on Tap. I hope you're enjoying the show. Truth on Tap is focused on bringing you absolute truth about everything from mainstream media to comedy, from psychology to the paranormal. This show keeps it real, not the fake kind of real, the real kind of real. That same spirit also covers our Caps on Tap show about the Washington Capitals. Caps on Tap shows air only after Capitals wins at this time. Please come like our Facebook page and join the conversation at facebook.com slash truth on tap show. Truth on Tap has been picked up and promoted by iHeartRadio, the internet audio mega monster. So shows are available there as well as on Spreaker and a limited selection on iTunes. To get in on a show's chat, you can chat from the Facebook page I mentioned or go to www.spreaker.com slash user slash truth on tap and look for the live episode or call in at 910-NO-LYING. That's 910-665-9464. Thanks again for checking out Truth on Tap and Caps on Tap. 